Hi guys, it's Anna. Today I'm doing a tutorial for this little romper. It's really cute for like a bikini cover up or you can wear like a bralette and shorts under or just whatever you want under. It just looks really cute and beachy and summery and I love how it turned out. I also made this blue one, which I really love how this one turned out. It's super cute. I just, I love them both and I love the fit and how it's kind of loosey. It reminds me of something that would be at like Free People. Like just that kind of loose, beachy, summery vibe. Boho, you know, it's it's really cute. I do just want to give credit to where I first got inspiration for this romper. So I saw a post from this girl on Pinterest. Her username is Pippa or Pipa King.com and it's so cute. I love it. And people in the comments were asking where she got it from or if she made it or something. And she said she got it from a thrift store and she didn't give like a brand or anything. So I'm wondering if someone just made this and then donated it eventually. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's where I got the original inspiration for that. So I wanted to give credit to her post and whoever made that. I don't know, I couldn't find um, the original brand of that so i don't know i don't know where it came from but that's where i got the inspiration for the romper and so i made my own little pattern inspired by that but this really isn't a difficult project i definitely thought it was going to be a little bit more of like an intermediate advanced pattern but it really isn't especially if you've made if you made my cover-up dress tutorial that's on my channel um, it's pretty similar to that. It's just like a romper. It is different for sure, but it's a little similar to that. So if you've made that, then this should be super easy. But even if you haven't, like it's really not difficult. I made this in like two days, the one that I'm wearing and this one. Um, and it was just pretty simple. It's pretty chill. It is pretty repetitive. So it's something that you can like make while watching something else, which I love. Those are my favorite kind of things to make. If you're not subscribed already, then I'd really appreciate it if you did. I make tons of videos like this, like fashion, DIY, crochet type videos. So that would be really awesome if you wanted to do that. But let's just get into how to make the romper. Okay, the first thing you'll need is some DK weight yarn. Any yarn will work, but I'm using the Loops and Threads Cream Cotton Yarn in the color cream. You'll also need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, some stitch markers. You can use a bobby pin, you can use actual stitch markers. I'm just using safety pins, but anything to like mark where you are in your project. And then you'll also need a darning needle. The first thing you'll need to do is take your yarn and make a slip knot. So make a loop and then pull the yarn through the loop like that and then insert your hook and tighten that down. So we are gonna be making foundation treble crochets, which I'm gonna show you what to do. It's a little bit slow when you first get started and are trying to like learn it for the first time, but as you go, it builds up pretty quickly and it saves us some time. So basically, instead of having to do a chain and then do treble crochets into the chain, it just gets it all in one step. So we'll just have we're building up treble crochets and the chain at once. So I like that because it saves time. And then also because I find that if you start with just the chain, then it can sometimes not be accurate for like how wide it's actually gonna be once you start putting stitches into it, if that makes sense. So sometimes your chain will be tighter. And so then after you've done your treble crochets into the chain, it ends up wider than you initially wanted it to be. And so this kind of helps with that a little bit. So yeah, what you're gonna do first for the treble crochet, foundation treble crochet, is you're gonna chain five. So chain one, two, three, four, five, like that. And now you are gonna wrap your yarn around your hook twice. So twice like that. And then we're gonna go into this very first chain here and see how I got both loops of that chain on my hook, not just one. And then you're gonna grab your yarn, pull up a loop. And now we're essentially gonna be making the chain part. So you're gonna wanna loosen that loop off of your hook a little bit so the chain isn't too tight. Because if you make this chain too tight, then once you start making your foundation treble crochets, it'll kind of curve like that and curl and stuff. So get that nice and loose and then you're gonna yarn over and pull your yarn just through that one first loop right there. So you should have four loops on your hook. Now you're gonna yarn over and pull through two of those loops 
and then yarn over, pull through the next two, and then yarn over and pull through those last two. And that made our first foundation treble crochet. Now wrap your yarn twice around the hook again, and we're gonna go into this space right there. So we're gonna get that first loop on our hook right there, just at the base of this treble crochet we just made. So hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. You're going into that loop, and then you're also gonna pick up that loop on the back. So keep those loops around your hook, and I'll just show you. You're picking up that one, the one we just picked up, and then that one on the back as well. So you should have two loops on your hook right there, and then pull your yarn through, and now yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two for our second foundation treble crochet. Wrap your yarn twice and go into the bottom of this one. So it's gonna be right there at the bottom. Pick up both of those loops. So I got one there and then I also have to pick up that back one, which is a little bit more difficult, but just pick it up like that. Pull up a loop, make that nice and loose. Yarn over, pull through that first one, then pull through two, then pull through two, then pull through two. Then wrap the yarn around your hook twice, go into the bottom of this previous treble crochet. We're picking up both loops, so I got one and two. Pull up a loop, pull through one loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through two. And then you're just gonna keep doing this I will also link a video that explains the foundation treble crochet if you need a better explanation. And yeah, so just go watch that if this is still a little bit confusing and hopefully that will help you. But the biggest part is just finding where to insert your hook at the bottom. So it's gonna be right there in that base. You just need to make sure you're getting both loops. And then also make sure you're not making that chain that we're doing too tight because you want it to be nice and loose so it doesn't start to curve. So I'm just gonna keep doing these foundation treble crochets until I have enough to go around the widest part of my hips. And I will show you what I'm talking about, how it should look, how snug it should be and all that once I get to that point. But I'm just gonna keep doing this. And I think it's gonna be 112 total treble crochets including that first those chains that we made at the beginning. So I will just show you how it looks once I keep doing this and get a length that will wrap around the widest part of my hips. I finished making my foundation treble crochets and I just wanted to show you how it's gonna look if you put it on. So basically it should wrap around the widest part of your hips slash your butt, just wherever your widest down here. It should wrap around there and fit pretty snug because I did say earlier, like doing the foundation treble crochets does give you a better idea of how wide it'll be, but it still has that chain in there. So it's not gonna be quite as stretchy as it'll be once we start just doing the foundation treble crochets without those chains in between. So it's okay if it's a little bit snug. Um, it still has some stretch though, as you can see. So it's not like too tight. And this was 112 stitches total, again, including that first, those chains that we did at the beginning. And also keep in mind, I'm wearing shorts right now, but don't do that for you. That's just like for the sake of the video, but just wear whatever you would be wearing if you were like wearing the uh, romper when you're done. But yeah, this is kind of how it should look and that's kind of the snugness that you want it to be. And so now we will connect this and continue. So like I said, I did 112 stitches total, including those chains at the beginning. And once you have the number that works for you to get that level of snugness that I showed in the last clip, you're gonna actually remove that very last stitch that we did, because we're gonna be making that stitch a little bit different to connect it to the beginning. So you're gonna take your long row and just fold it over like this, make sure there's no twists or anything, and just have it kind of like that where we're gonna meet it up right there at the beginning. And you're gonna wrap your yarn twice around the hook just like normal, go into the bottom of that last stitch, just like normal, pull up a loop. 
all of that is what we would normally do, but now it's gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna go into like through the front of the very bottom first initial chain there from where we first started, like right after the slip knot. You see that little hole right there? You're gonna go into there from the front. Again, make sure there's no twist or anything. And then you're gonna grab your yarn and you're gonna pull through that loop and then you're also gonna pull through that first loop on your hook. So that connects the bottom there. And now we're just gonna carry on making the treble crochet and then we'll connect at the top. So now just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two to make the treble crochet. And then we're gonna go into the very top stitch here. So it's gonna be that chain right there before that first treble crochet stitch. So that go into that chain right there from the front. And then we're just gonna make a slip stitch to connect them like that. So now our foundation row is connected in the round. And then we're gonna just be working in the round from now. So I'm gonna chain four because that is the turning chain height for treble crochets. And at this point, I would recommend just like trying this on again and making sure everything is the right width and that you can like pull it up over your butt, over your hips, and get this to like your stomach area. You just wanna make sure it's not too loose or too tight, just that it fits how it fit earlier when we were trying that on. And now you're gonna turn, so we're working the other direction. And this chain four at the beginning of every row is gonna count as a stitch, so we are not gonna be working into that stitch right there because we already have like this acting as our stitch for that space instead we're gonna start working in this next stitch right there so we're gonna wrap our yarn twice around the hook and we're gonna make a treble crochet into that very first stitch there so that's a treble crochet and then wrap your yarn twice around the hook go into this next one pull up a loop pull through two pull through two and pull through two and wrap twice, go in the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And we're just gonna keep doing this, just doing one treble crochet into every single stitch all the way around until we get back to here. And then I'll show you how to end that row. I made it back to where we started and you should count your stitches and make sure nothing's changing. Make sure you're not increasing or decreasing. We're just doing one treble crochet in every stitch. And so I have two more. So I'll just go here, treble crochet. And then I have one more right here into this very last treble crochet like that. And now we are gonna do our slip stitch. So you're gonna just slip stitch into that very top chain of the chain four. So just go in from the front like that, grab your yarn and pull through both loops and then chain four and turn. So we're working in the other direction. And now we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So we're not gonna work into that first stitch there because we already have this chain in that spot. So then we're gonna make a triple crochet into this next one right there. And we're just gonna do a triple crochet into every single stitch just like this, just like we just did. And yeah, I'm, I will show you one more time just how to end off the row in case that was confusing for you. But yeah, you're just doing one in every stitch and your stitch count should not be changing. I have one more stitch, so I'll just do that final stitch and then we will connect to the beginning. So just go into that very top, that fourth chain there like that and make a slip stitch and then chain four and then turn your yarn or your work. So I'm just gonna keep doing exactly what we've been doing, just one treble crochet in every stitch and then end it like I just showed you and just keep doing that. Just one in every stitch. We're not doing any increases or decreases now, so it's pretty straightforward. So I just did my third row. I'm working on my fourth, and I'm gonna do about 15, I think. And I'll show you like what I'm talking about, like how you want it to look and stuff. Essentially, you are going to hold it to where it's gonna stop at the back, so kind of your lower back, and then it should be long enough to go down to like your crotch, and then we'll make the crotch bridge and then start making the leg openings. 
but I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I am going to just keep making rows of this. Um, again, I think I'll do 15, but I'll show you. And I will get back to you once I have that all done. All right, I have done 15 rows total, including that very first row we made, and this is how it's looking. So as you can see in the back, it kind of just goes like to my lower back. Um, and basically it's just the length of like here to my crotch area where we're gonna make the crotch of the shorts essentially. So yeah, this is the height that we're trying to go to. My belly button's like right here. So it's like a little bit above belly button height for me. And that's how it's looking. Like I said, I did 15 rows and I just chained one at the end just so I can remove my hook. And so now what we're gonna do is just kind of line up these two parts here, like where we first attach our yarn and where we just finished that row and connected to the beginning there. And we're gonna fold this kind of skirt piece, I guess, on that line, that seam there. So you're just trying to fold it so these chains in the middle here are on the seam directly and just get it as close as you can. And then on the opposite side of where we just left off, where that loop is, on this side of the skirt, we are gonna put a stitch marker into that stitch. So I'm just gonna put my stitch marker right there into that stitch right there on the seam. And if you want this to be like perfect and exact, then you can go in and count all of your stitches and divide that by two. So you have like an even number on each side of the stitch marker but this is pretty good for me. So now if we go back, then this seam right here, which is kind of hard to see, but it's, you know, where we just folded on, that's the seam that's gonna be on the very back middle of the shorts. And then this is gonna be the front middle. So we are gonna add a little bridge there and then that will separate the two legs and then we can work individually on each leg. So now I'm just laying it out and I'll put my hook back in here. I already chained one and the number you chain here is gonna depend on your size and it also might just depend on how you want it to fit. Like if you want the leg openings to be larger or not. So like your thigh size could play a role in this, but I'll put on the screen what chains I would recommend doing per size. And if your size is one that's not shown, you just add two each time, like follow the pattern that is on the screen, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna be doing a small, so I'm gonna chain eight. Remember, I've already chained one, so seven more. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm doing these pretty loosely, by the way, because you don't want them to be too tight. Then we're gonna go across to where we put our stitch marker in, and you're gonna insert your hook into that stitch marked stitch like that and then make a slip stitch and right now you should try this on and see if that's feeling good if it feels too tight then you'll add more chains just to make the leg openings a little looser or you can try making your actual chains looser with your hook like with your tension make it looser but you just want this to fit kind of comfortably if you try it on, but if that's good, then just reinsert your hook and chain four. And then we're gonna turn, so we're working across the bridge like that. And so turn these chains so that you can see like the front of them. And our first treble crochet is gonna be in that very last chain that we made. If it's hard to see, you can just count like from the left to the right um, because you know how many chains you made. So I did eight, so I'll count like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know it's this spot right here. And I'm just gonna make a treble crochet into that very first chain. And then I'll make one in the next chain like that. And I'm just gonna make treble crochets all the way down this bridge. And you should have a total number, number of treble crochets as you'd made chains. So I did eight, so I'm gonna do eight treble crochets, not including that chain right there. That would make it nine if we were including that chain. But yeah, you're just gonna do one treble for every 
chain you made. So I have one more here at the end. Just insert my hook and you should have a total number that is the same number as your chains. Again, not including that one, that would make it nine for me, but I have eight actual treble crochets here. And then the next stitch is gonna be this next treble crochet, not the one that's directly like underneath where we are, it's gonna be that one. So I'm just gonna go into that stitch there with a treble crochet and then go into that next one. And then we're just working all the way around this leg opening here until we make it back to where we started on the bridge there. And we're not doing any increases or decreases or anything, just one treble crochet in every single stitch until we make it back. I made it back around to where we started and I'm also gonna be doing one last stitch into that stitch marked stitch that we made that, that chain of four in right there. So I'll just make my final treble crochet in there like that. And then we will just slip stitch to that fourth chain of the chain four. to end that row and then chain four again and turn. And now you can really make the length of the shorts as long as you'd like. So I'm just gonna be doing, I think two rows total. So I just made one, so I'll just do one more row and that's pretty short shorts. Um, but if you wanted them like super short, you could just do this one row and be done. But I'm gonna do one more. So yeah, I'll just go into this next stitch with a treble crochet and then I'll just go all the way around just like we just did and then come back to where we started and we will detach our yarn and then work on the next leg opening. And basically we're just gonna do the same thing. But yeah, so just make your shorts as long as you want. Make this leg opening as long as you want and then we will replicate that on the other side. I made my last stitch there, and so I'm just gonna slip stitch into that fourth chain of the chain four, and then chain one, and now cut your yarn, and just pull it through and tighten that down. And that was just the length that I wanted, but obviously if you wanted yours longer, you would just keep going. And then once you have a length that you want, then you do what I just showed, connect your yarn and then cut it. But now we're just gonna do the same thing on this other side. To start this other leg opening, you're gonna go into that very first chain of the bridge or that very rightmost chain of the bridge. So it's gonna be right here. And I'm just gonna grab that loop on my hook since this is like the other side of the chain, there's only gonna be one loop instead of two. And grab your yarn, make a slip knot and put the slip knot on your hook and then just tighten that down a little and you'll pull it through that loop, that first chain, and then chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna be working this way and I'm gonna work over this tail here so I don't have to weave that in later. But our next treble crochet is gonna be into this next chain there and remember we're just getting that one loop on our hook since we were putting both loops on our hook on the other side of the chain if that makes any sense but you're just getting one loop on this side for this leg opening and just make a treble crochet and again i'm working over this other tail but you don't have to you can just weave it in later if that's easier for you but i'm just making my treble crochets all the way across and we're just gonna do exactly the same thing where we just work all the way around this leg opening. Since that chain four was in that first chain of the chain eight in my case, we are gonna have eight or whatever your chain bridge length was total, including that chain. So I have eight here including that chain and that accounts for the bridge. And so now we are done with the bridge. And so my next stitch is gonna be there where we put that stitch marker and that stitch mark stitch. So I'm gonna stop working over this tail because it's kind of in the way. 
and just make a treble crochet into that stitch marked stitch opening there. And then the next one will be in this stitch right after. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You just go into every stitch. As you can see, I made it back to that chain. And if you look at the other side, like the other leg opening here, we didn't go into this very last gap there, so we didn't make any extra stitches. So this stitch right there is gonna be my last one. And then, and if it helps you, then you can go in and count how many stitches this leg opening was total and just replicate that on this side so you have an even number. But yeah, I'm just gonna not go into that last stitch because we didn't do it on this side, if that makes sense. And then you're gonna slip stitch into that top, that fourth stitch of the chain four, or that fourth chain of the chain four, just like we've always done. And then chain four and turn your work. And now we're just going in the opposite direction. And this is now gonna be exactly what we just did on the other leg opening. So feel free to go back to that part of the video if you need any help on like ending it off and stuff. But I'm just gonna make exactly what I did on the other leg opening, just make it the same length that you did. So for me, I'm just doing one more row and then I will cut my yarn when I'm done after reattaching and all that. And then we will work on the top part of the romper. So this is how the shorts look like once I finished both leg openings. So, I wanted to show you like what we're doing now. So if you pull this up, that's kind of where the low back of the romper is gonna be sitting. So we're not gonna be increasing the very back anymore, but now we're just gonna be attaching our yarn about here on each side and then um, decreasing to make it to where it kind of gradually goes in. And then we're just going to be working back and forth that way, not working over that very back part because that's going to stay that low uh, row number. So we're not going to increase anything right there, but we're just going back and forth and then slowly like decreasing it so it goes in on the sides. And then eventually once it gets like up here, we should have it like where it stops right there. And then we can work on the cups for the romper. So when you're deciding where to start doing your decreases, you want it to be about here. And I'll let you know like my exact numbers that I do, but you want it to be about in that area on your back. Now we are ready to move on to the top part, like I said. So I'm gonna try and explain the decreasing a little bit more here. So there is gonna be a little bit of math, but it's like not super difficult. So what I do is I do like 17 stitches away from the center here is where I'll start making my decreases. And then we'll, we'll decrease that way from there. But 17 is where I start. So I'm not even touching the ones that are within 17 stitches from the center and for me that 17 distance that i'm doing is about 0.15 of the total stitch number so my total stitch number was 112 all the way around and i'm doing 17 away on each side so that's about 0.15 if you want to use that to get the number that you should do for your size but I do need to say that if you have like a significantly different size than me, you might need to change up how often you're decreasing. So if you're gonna make one that's a good bit larger than mine, then you might need to decrease more quickly. So what I'm gonna show you is we're gonna be decreasing at the beginning of each row and at the end, but you might have to play around with that if yours is a little bit bigger. Um, so you might have to do two decreases at the beginning and one decrease at the end, or you could do two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end or something like that. Um, but you might have to decrease more frequently in order to get it to where it's around to the front of your body quickly enough, if that makes sense. So you might have to play around with that a little bit to get all of the proportions and stuff right. 
but if you are making a similar size to me, then I will give you also like the exact numbers and how often I'm decreasing. So you can just copy that. But yeah, just keep that in mind. You might have to experiment a little bit and mess around with how often you decrease. Um, yeah, but it, it won't take that long. I did when I was making like my tester versions of this, I had to undo and redo a couple times and like unravel back down to here and decrease more often or less often. And it wasn't too bad. Like it didn't take that long to redo. So you might have to do a little bit of that, but I will show you what I'm doing. So to just get right into it, these are like the bottom of the shorts where we just make the leg, the leg openings. And now we're up here at the top. This is where we first started. So that very center stitch is gonna be this chain right here, which is right to the left, right to the left, directly to the left of this tail here. So that chain right there is gonna be the very center. And then we're gonna be counting to the left and to the right of that. So for the left, I said earlier, I'm doing 17. That's what I found works best for me. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's my 17th stitch right there. And I'm going to just put a stitch marker in there so I can keep that place. So I'll just stitch mark that and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, like going the other direction. So again, that's the middle stitch. This is gonna be the first one that we're counting. So one, two, three, 14, 15, 16, 17, right there. And that goes with that stitch opening. So I'll just place another stitch marker there. And basically we're gonna start here and then work all the way around until we get to this stitch marker. And then we will turn back around. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. If that didn't make any sense, hopefully that does now. We're just working like back and forth, leaving this little middle part alone. So I'm going to attach my yarn there at that stitch marked stitch by doing what we did earlier with the slip knot and then putting that on your hook and just pulling that through. And then we're gonna chain four like normal. And again, I'm gonna be working over this tail just to help reduce how much we have to weave in at the end. And so we made that chain, but now we have to make a decrease. Cause like I said, I'm gonna be decreasing at the beginning and end of every row. So to do that, we're gonna combine two stitches into one. So this is that stitch that we just went into, right? And the next one is gonna be this stitch right here. So just wrap your yarn twice around the hook, just like normal, go into that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through two again, just like normal. But instead of pulling through those final two, we are gonna wrap the yarn around the hook two more times, and then go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then you should have three more loops on your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. So what that did was it combined these two stitches into one. So when we go back, when we're ready to go back over these stitches, you'll see that these two are combined, like at the top, those two just turn into one stitch that we're going into. So that makes a decrease for us. And so that was my decrease. And now I'm just gonna go just one treble crochet into every stitch. So I'm just gonna keep working all the way around, working over that tail until I make it back over here in this general area of that other stitch marker. And then I'll show you how we decrease at the end. I made it here to the other stitch marker and I'm two stitches away from the stitch mark stitch, if that makes sense. Or I guess I'm one, I, you know what I mean? Like there's one stitch there and then there is the stitch mark stitch. And so you're gonna need two stitches to make that decrease because we're gonna combine those into one. So once you have those two remaining, then start just making a regular treble crochet, go through two, go through two. And then when you have two loops still on your hook, you're gonna wrap twice again and then go into that stitch marked stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through three there and then chain four and now we're gonna turn and the next stitch is gonna be there but remember we're making a decrease so it's gonna be a little bit different so go into that next stitch 
pull through two, pull through two, and then wrap twice, and then go into the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through three to make that decrease. And now every other stitch that we make is just gonna be regular treble crochets, one in every stitch until we get back around to over here where we'll make another decrease. I'm back around to the end and I just wanted to show you like what the last and second and last stitches are because it might not be super obvious. So this right here is going to be the third to last stitch and then this is going to be the second to last stitch because that's the one that we combined into one. As you can see there's just one opening there and then the last stitch is actually the fourth chain of this chain four. So we're going to do one more stitch, just regular treble crochet. And then our two final stitches that we're going to be combining into one for our ending decrease is going to be this one that we decreased last row into one and then that fourth chain of the chain four. So I'm going to go into that opening, pull through two, pull through two, and then wrap around twice and then go into that fourth chain of the chain four like that pull up a loop pull through two pull through two and then pull through three to turn those last two into one stitch then chain four and turn now we're going to make another decrease since it's the beginning of another row. So this is going to be where we place our next stitch. So just go into there, pull through two, pull through two, and then we're making a decrease. So you know the drill, wrap around twice, go in the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through three. So we made a decrease and now every other stitch that we make is just one regular treble crochet into every stitch. So I'm just continuing to do these treble crochets into every stitch after that. So just like the last row, we have two more stitches remaining because this is combined into one stitch and then we have that fourth chain of the chain four. So we're gonna combine those together since we're at the end of the row into a decrease. So go into that stitch, that combined stitch Go through two, go through two, and then wrap twice around the hook. Go into the fourth chain, go through two, go through two, and then go through three to make another decrease. Chain four and turn. And at this point, we're just doing exactly what we've been doing. So I'll make a decrease there by combining these two together. Go through three and then we're just doing regular treble crochets in every other stitch. Basically you're just going back and forth doing a decrease at the beginning and end of each row unless you've decided that you need to do more or less depending on your size but I will be doing a decrease at the beginning and the end of each row and then I will just get back to you once I've reached a height that's good for me and a width that also works so all right i have done as many rows as i'm gonna do and this was 10 rows total of doing the decreases at the end in the beginning and this is kind of the look that you want uh, as you can see i'm just like loosely holding it up here and it just stops like right under my chest really i guess if i pulled it all the way then it goes up here but i'm going for kind of a looser fit and i want it to have that kind of drape, you know? So I'm doing mine a little bit looser and then we'll start making the cups. But yeah, I would say you want it to be about there when you pull it a little bit tighter, like right here. Is that your sternum or is that up? I don't know, I don't know, but it's like right here in the middle of my bust is where it goes up to. Like I said, I did 10 total rows doing the decreases at the beginning and end of each row. So we get like this kind of decrease so it goes towards the front of the romper. And just try it on, see if it's fitting how mine fits. And if you need to, then make adjustments. So basically you want it to go to like the side of your chest and you want it to reach the height that I showed you. 
But once you're good with all that, then we can start working on our triangles at the very top. So to do this, you're gonna wanna count every single stitch all the way across this very top row that we did. And the way you're gonna count it is, as you can see at like the very start of this row where we just left off, I have one stitch. It's two stitches that I combined into one stitch. So we're gonna count that as one stitch because we made a decrease there. So that's one. This is gonna be two three, four, five, six, and then count all of these just as one. And then at the very end, you'll count, you have this, this decrease here that's also gonna be just one stitch. And then you have also this final stitch as your chain at the end. So what you're gonna do is see if the number, the total number of stitches that you have is even or odd. If it is an odd number, then you'll just take that number and count it multiple times just to make sure you have the right number, the right count. But if you have an odd number, you'll take your total stitch count, divide it by two, and then round that number down. And I'll show you like a little example if you need it. But if you have an even number, then you'll take your full total number of stitches, subtract one to make it odd, and then divide that by two and then round it down. So I'll just count mine for you. I have Again, like I said, this decrease right here is counting as one stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, twenty-thirteen, twenty-fourteen, twenty-fifteen, twenty-sixteen, twenty-seventeen, twenty-eighteen, twenty-nineteen, twenty-twenty, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-eight. This is all going to be one stitch, so fifty-nine, and then sixty is going to be that fourth chain of the chain four there. So I have sixty total stitches, which obviously is an even number. So I'm going to subtract one from that, get 59, and then divide 59 by two, which is 29.5, and we're rounding that down, so that's gonna be 29. So grab your stitch markers, and I'm gonna be counting that number that I just found, so 29. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 28, 29. So this is my 29th stitch, and I'll just place my stitch marker there and then count that same number from the right. Again, my first stitch is that fourth chain of the chain four, and then my second is this combined stitch there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My 29th is gonna be this stitch right here. So I'll just put a stitch marker there. And what should happen here is that if you have an even number of stitches, then you'll have two stitches in the middle there. And if you had an odd number, then it'll only be one stitch in the middle there. So that's kind of how that's gonna work. Now that we have our stitches marked off, we're just gonna be doing our triangles one at a time. So we're gonna start on this side because that's where our yarn's still attached. And we're just gonna be going like to this stitch marker and then going back and forth and decreasing each time. So what works well for me is doing two decreases at the beginning and end of each row. So I would do two at the start here and then two at the end here as well. So you're, you're just gonna chain four to start the new row and then turn. So like I said, we're gonna do two decreases at the beginning. So just like we did for these decreases, we're gonna go into this next stitch, not this one right here because we already have that chain in that space. So this next stitch, make the start of a treble crochet and then go into the next one to make that decrease. So two, two, and then three to combine those stitches into one. And then we're making another decrease. So in this next stitch, we'll do the same thing. Go through two, go through two, then wrap twice, go into the next stitch, go through two, go through two, and then go through three. So we've combined four stitches into two separate stitches. And then until we get towards the end, we're just gonna do regular treble crochets all the way down to where we come back to the stitch marker. Once you have four stitches remaining, including that final stitch marked stitch, then we're gonna start making our first of two decreases. So in this next stitch, we're just gonna make a decrease. So go through two, two, wrap twice, go in the next one, go through two, go through two, and then go through three. So that was our first decrease. And then our second decrease, go into this next one, two, 
to wrap twice, and then I'll remove this stitch marker. Go into that one, wrap with twice, twice, and then three times to make our second decrease. Then chain four and turn. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing. So two decreases at the beginning. So that's gonna be this stitch right there, right next to where we are now, and make a decrease. So two, two, wrap twice, go in the next one, two, two, three. And then we have another decrease to make. So two, two, wrap twice, go in the next stitch, two, two, and three. So that is the second decrease for the beginning of the row. So we're done for now. And then we just do regular treble crochets in every other stitch. I have four stitches remaining. So this one, this one, this combined one, and then that fourth chain of the chain four. So I'm gonna make my first of two decreases, two, two, wrap twice, next stitch, two, two, and three. And then one more decrease, go into this combined stitch, two, two, wrap twice, and go into that chain four, and then two, two, and three. And then chain four, and now we're just doing the exact same thing until we'll reach a point eventually, and that will be the top of the triangle, and I'll show you what to do once you get to that row. But yeah, that's just what you're gonna do. So just keep following those steps where you do two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end. And you'll just keep doing that and then I'll show you what to do once you get closer to that point. So I'm starting my sixth row of doing this triangle. And I just wanted to show you kind of what I'm doing towards the end. And it will be a little bit different depending on how many stitches you had for your triangle width but I'm gonna show you like another example with um, an even number of stitches. And so hopefully it'll kind of give you an idea of how you can end yours off because it might be a little different than mine. But I did just wanna say that as you're going, you should check your stitches and make sure that you did do two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end of each row because if you don't, then that will mess up your count and then it won't be the same on the other side. So yeah, go in and make sure every single row has two decreases for both the beginning and the end of each row because it is really easy to forget to do them, especially at the beginning of the rows. It's easy to just do one decrease when you're supposed to do two. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing for these last couple rows. So just like normal, start it off with two decreases. So that's my first one, and then my second one is there. And then I just, now I have four stitches remaining, so I'm not gonna do any plain treble crochets. I'm gonna go right into my next decrease for the end decreases, but like I said earlier, yours might be a little bit different. So I'll show you an example where it might not end this perfectly and what to do there. So doing my second decrease. So all I have there really is decreases minus that initial chain. And then chain four and turn. And now I just have four stitches remaining. So I'll just do two sets of decreases. Basically the goal here is just to get all of these stitches condensed into one or two stitches. So yeah, you might have to do some different things than I do to get there, but that's not important. All that's important is that you remember what you do so you can replicate it on the other side. So that's gonna be the top of mine. I've condensed it down to technically three stitches if we count that chain, but I just have two decreases in that chain and that's like a good triangle shape for me and then I'll have my strap there. But I made this little example of one that had an even number of stitches so I could show you like an instance where it doesn't work as well as mine did and what you could do. So I'll start by just making two decreases like that. And then my second decrease. There we go. But as you can see, I only have three stitches remaining so I can't do 
two decreases. So I'm actually just gonna combine these three stitches into one. So I'm gonna do a decrease with three stitches instead of two. So I'll show you to do that. So you just do normal, like how you'd normally do a decrease with two stitches, two, two, but instead of pulling through and going through all three, we're gonna wrap again and go into that final third stitch, pull up a loop, go through two, two, and then you're gonna go through four. So that converts three stitches into one. And then chain four. And now I just have three stitches remaining. So I'm just gonna do what I just did and do another decrease for three instead of two, just so I can wrap up this triangle. Go into that fourth chain. Oops. And then two, two, and then it'll be four. And that's kind of how that triangle is gonna look. So again, it's not super critical that you could do like exactly what I did and you have exactly two decreases there, whatever. You just wanna get a point, but you do need to like write these things down because you're gonna have to replicate the exact same thing for the other triangles. So that's all that's important is that you do exactly the same thing on one triangle as another. The next step while our yarn is still attached to the top of this triangle is to make our strap. So this is gonna be the long strap that goes all the way down to the back and then we'll tie those that strap to another strap that we're gonna make here at the back. But yeah, this is gonna be the longer strap and you might again have to make some changes depending on your size and your body. But what I find works for me and like my torso height and the height just in general of the romper is a hundred chains. So there's one, two, three, four, and I'm just gonna chain to 100. I just chained 100 and this is kind of how it looks, but again, try it on and make sure that you'll have enough room to tie it to a strap down here in the back. And once you have that chain length that's good for you. Then we're gonna be single crocheting down this entire chain. So you're gonna skip that first chain closest to the hook and go into this chain second from the hook and just make a single crochet and then make a single crochet in the next one and then in the next one and just all the way down this chain. I've done my single crochets all the way down and now we're gonna attach it to this triangle, but as you can see, like I'm crocheting that way and I wanna attach it over here, if you can see that. So I'm gonna take my hook out and just make it where it goes, it kind of flips that way. So it'll attach where it's not hanging off of the triangle. So I'll flip that so I can attach it from the back. And then I'm gonna go into this top chain there of the chain four and just slip stitch that down and then just chain one and cut your yarn and pull it through. Now we just need to do the strap on the back that will tie together with this longer strap. And I would recommend just trying this on and kind of holding this down and seeing where you want it to connect. You can even get like a safety pin and just pin it like there just to see where along here you want the second strap to, but I like how it looks with mine seven stitches away from the center. So the center is gonna be this chain right here to the left of this tail. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's this stitch here is where I'm gonna start chaining from. So just attach your yarn by making a slip knot and then putting the slip knot on your hook pulling it through and then just start chaining just like we did for the top. And this one's gonna be a good bit shorter than this other one. So I'm gonna do about 35 chains total. So I've got two here and I'm just gonna chain loosely until I get to around 35. But again, just do whatever you found will be a good length. I've got my 35 done and now in the second chain from the hook, we're gonna make a single crochet. And we're just gonna single crochet all the way down just like we did for that other strap. So I'm just gonna go all the way down this chain with single crochets and then we'll attach it just like we did for the other strap. 
I've single crocheted all the way down and now I'm just gonna attach down here. So I'm just gonna go into that stitch right next to where we first attached our yarn and make a slip stitch and chain one and cut my yarn, pull it through. But now that we've done that, we're gonna start on the second triangles and the second sets of straps and all that. And it's gonna be exactly what we just did. So very simple, but you're gonna start here on the very outer edge and just insert your hook into that fourth chain of the chain four. Then grab your yarn, make a slip knot, put it on your hook, pull it through, and then chain four. So just like for the other triangle, we're gonna be doing two decreases at the beginning, two decreases at the end. So for our first decrease, it's gonna be in that stitch right next to where we are now. So this decrease stitch here. So just make a decrease like that and then make our second decrease. And again, just make sure you're doing a two decreases at the start of each row and two decreases at the end. And just make sure you're doing everything exactly how you did for the other triangle. And so at this point, I did my two decreases at the beginning. So I'm just gonna keep doing regular treble crochets all the way down. And again, now that we have four stitches before that stitch marked, stitch we will start doing our decreases so this is our first of two for the end so that's the first one and then do the second decrease go into that very last stitch mark stitch and then do our second decrease then chain four and at this point it's exactly what we've done over here so i'm not going to show it again but feel free to Go watch that part of the video again but yeah it's just exactly the same thing doing two decreases at the beginning of each row and two decreases at the end of each row until you get to the end and then you do the strap do it the same length that you did on the other side and then you detach your yarn and then do the strap down here and for this strap you'll do again what we did on this side Count how many stitches away from the center stitch you made that strap and do the exact same thing over here. Again, make it the same length, everything. We're just doing everything exactly the same as how we did it for here. So feel free to go back in the video and watch that if you need a refresher. All right, so I finished up the second triangle and both sets of straps are done and I went ahead and I just tied them together but um, now all we have to do is weave in our ends. So I'll really quickly just show you how to do that and get rid of any stitch markers as well. But just take an end and put it over to like the bad side of your work. So the inside of the romper. And then we're just gonna kind of weave in through stitches to hide that tail. So just put that through the darning needle through stitches just all around just weaving it around so it doesn't come undone and once you've woven it in really well and are confident that it's secure then you can just go ahead and cut that end and loosen everything so it's not poking out and now you're just gonna do this for all of the ends everywhere and just weave all those in and then at that point we will be completely done with the romper and then you can try it on i already tried it on that's why i tied it but you'll want to try it on so you know like how tight you want these ties to be so i'll just show you guys what it looks like on after i've woven in the ends I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful in making your own little romper. If you do make your own, I would love if you tagged me on Instagram or TikTok or wherever you post something or even just DM me a picture of it because I just love seeing you guys make something that I made a video. Like it's just, it's just so cool for me to see you guys in your crochet stuff. So definitely do that. And if you have any questions about anything in the video or you're having a problem, then just comment below and I will do my best to help you. Or you can just comment something and have a little chat. We can have a little combo if you want to do that and say hi. If you're not subscribed, then go ahead and do that. If you would like to see 
more videos from me i'm posting like once a week at this point like that's kind of the pattern that i'm on maybe even more than once a week so just saying there's more on the way feel free to comment any like video requests that you want to see if you have any tutorial ideas or anything really like i just did a crochet with me and that was really fun i want to make just tons of stuff i'm moving in a couple months or like a little over a month like a month and a half i'll be moving so i'm gonna be making a bunch of stuff for my new apartment and i want to do a whole like video for moving in and everything i've thrifted and stuff so yeah i have tons planned for my channel but yeah that's all i have to say um thank you guys so much for being here truly i just hit 40,000, i think and i'm almost at like i think i'm maybe at 41,000 at this point yeah i'm almost at 42,000, which is crazy like thank you guys so much for watching that's kind of an unfathomable amount of people to me so that's wild thank you thank you and thank you but thank you guys so much for watching i will see you next time Bye.